Welcome to an edition of Two-Year-Olds in Training. I'm Harold Howe with Mark Austin at his farm up near Fergus, Ontario. Mark, we're going to talk two-year-olds, but before that, we just want to talk a few other horses. Fool me once. We saw him jogging today. He comes into uh, the new year. After winning, uh, I guess he was within sight of 600000 last year. Very nice season. Top New York Sire Steak horse. And uh, tailed a little bit right at the very end, but that was long ago. He looks... It looks like a million dollars today. How do you feel about him? Yeah, he's done real well over the winter, especially the last couple of months. He's really filled out and uh, he's growing a little bit and his attitude's real good. So, uh, yeah, we pick and choose our spots this summer. We should uh, have another decent year. It isn't getting any easier. No, no, this will be a tough year for him because, I mean, four-year-olds will go up against foiled again and them. It makes it pretty tough, but, I mean, if you protect him and look after him, uh, he'll look after us too. You made a good point to me that it's great that... There's a push to get these uh, horses to race on as four-year-olds. It's just too bad that there aren't more uh, racing organizations like uh, Hippodrome 3R who bring back the pre date It's about the only four-year-old event there is on its own. Yeah, just that, and there's the Meadowlands maturity that's down at the Meadowlands there. It goes sometime in June, but uh, other than that, that's the only one, and these tracks should get together and, and put on, I don't mean a race every week for four-year-olds, but there should be a half a dozen scattered throughout the year mm. to uh, make it worthwhile to bring them back at four because it is a tough transition. We also caught up with a horse you told me about a year ago, Weather Hanover. He's a three-year-old now, some beach somewhere, son, and he's just made his first start finishing second at Woodbine the other night. I know you are kind of jacked up about him. Why? Uh, he's shown me lots of ability right from the word we've, time we've broke him, really, and uh, run into a few problems last year. We had to castrate him. He got very steady when we went to school him and uh, got acting like an idiot, really. So we castrated him and uh, raced him a little bit afterwards, but he still hadn't, you know, focused on his game and work and that. So we turned him out, and we brought him back this year, and he's come back pretty strong, maybe a little too aggressive. He having a little time getting them to relax, you know, in qualifiers and stuff. But uh, Chris is driving them. And, uh, Chris Christopher. Right? Yeah, he's been driving them and doing a good job for us. So hopefully uh, in the next six weeks he'll turn the corner. So what's got to happen in the next subsequent series of starts? Uh, we're still going to try to race him from off the pace, you know, to, to educate him. And uh, by any, any, all means, we're still trying to win every start too, but uh, we have to teach horse how to race. Okay. Let's talk two-year-olds. We'll begin here with Jake Bluechip, an art major, 120000 at Lexington. And um, to, I said, he really looks like an art major. If I didn't know who he was, I could pick him out, even me. How do you feel about him from the time you picked him out to today? Yeah, I'm very happy with him. Uh, when I got him home from the sale, I thought he, he was bigger than he was at the sale, but uh, he's growing some and... Uh, He's a very nice colt, very nice colt. With the winter you've had here on the farm, what stage are you at with your group? Yeah, uh, we just trained them the other day in 32. That's the, the best we've been, but uh, they've got a ton of jog miles in them, and, and we brushed them right along all winter long pieces here and there, so they're very fit. Okay. Rock and roll Katie. This is a rock and roll Hanover filly, 100,000 out of Harrisburg. All American harness spreads, progeny, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we bought her out of Harrisburg. Uh, she's real strong on the maternal side. Uh, she's her last of the rock and roll Hanovers, so uh, we stepped up and bought her, and uh, yeah, I like her too. Okay. Uh, Tallulah Sealster, a Camlock filly you picked up for 28000 out of Forest City sale. Yeah, uh, Bob Pooley from Exeter picked her out and had me take a quick peek at her there just before she went into the ring, and, and I gave him the thumbs up, so he ended up buying her, and uh, yeah, she's been a nice filly all, all winter long, too. What makes her go? I mean, we're getting to, you mentioned at the tail end of the ro Rock and Roll Hanovers, there's not going to be an ever-ending supply of Camlock fillies. No, no, but there has been a lot of good Camlock fillies, and uh, and uh, Bob breeds a few, and, and he likes the Camlocks for broodmare, so he's, uh, I think he's got two or three at home now that are Camlocks, so yeah, he's uh, still on that quest. And the last one you brought up was, was a homebred, Moonlight Dance, and Art Major filly. 
Yeah, uh, she's owned by Doc Goodrow there, and uh, we had a hard time getting her gated uh, early in the in her uh, career there, but she's hit the pace there good now, and she's a nice, big, strong filly, and uh, she might be a little later on in the summer. She's a big filly and might take time to grow into herself. So as we're into the spring here, and you finally got through a tough winter to have a, a pleasant day today, are you overall happy with what you've got? Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy with the the group that I've got, uh, and uh, keep your fingers crossed and hopefully uh, do some damage. Mark, thanks for your thoughts, and good luck in the weeks ahead. Thank you, Harold. Harold Howe with Mark Austin, two-year-olds in training.